Thickening silicones. In this video, we're going to explain the basic process, and it is a very basic process, of thickening silicones for brush-on applications. And brush-on applications can include both casting as well as mold-making applications. So you might be brushing in a silicone skin into a large mold to create a prop face or head or something like that, or brushing thickened silicone over a pattern to make a negative brush-on mold. Now first, it's important to understand that Thixo works with specific silicones. Now for this video, I just wanted to cover mainly the 51 series. So Thixo will thicken the 5110 and 5110F, 5130 and 5130F, 5140 and 5150. Now, those are, again, by no means all of the silicones that will react to that thickener, but the ones that are most pertinent to this video. Now, also really important, the 5100, that's our really soft silicone for silicone masks and dolls, that one does not respond to Thixo. Now this also, Thixo can also be used with our TinCure silicones, the 5092 and the 5091. But when in doubt, consult the product page because we will always say on the product page what silicones respond to which additive product. So always check that out when in doubt. Now first, we're going to thicken up some 5110F. And 5110 comes in two speeds, the regular and the F, which of course is the fast formula. And this is a fast setting, soft platinum silicone that is great for uh, skin material as well as for soft, stretchy one-piece molds. Now here, we're mixing up the parts A and B one to one. And personally, on a product like this, I like to use a scale, do this one-to-one -one by weight, and do this all in one container. And that just minimizes waste, makes it a lot easier to keep everything very accurate, and a lot easier cleanup because then I don't dirty up a lot of different mixing cups. Now, as it comes, when we mix our two parts together, 5110 and 5110F, or FAST, both of these are very low viscosity silicones, so great for small block molds or one-piece molds that uh, in many cases you can pour without vacuum degassing. But remember, anytime you're gonna be pressure casting, you have to make sure you vacuum degas your silicone. Now, just to make this a little easier to see, I'm going to be adding some of our new silicone pigment to this. This is our light olive color. Many of you have been asking for new silicone pigments, new flesh tones. So we are adding a whole new range of silicone flesh tones. And once I get that mixed in, then I'm ready to add my Thixo. Now it's important to keep track of our working time, obviously for this demonstration. I don't have anything important I'm gonna put this on, but real critical to make sure that you keep track of your working time. Now remember 5110 and 5110F have different set times. So 5110 has a working time of about 25 to 30 minutes in a four hour demold. Whereas the 5110F that we're using here, that has about a six to eight minute working time and a one hour demold. Now, if you add just a little bit of Thixo, you're gonna wind up with a slightly runny paste where you'll see here in a second, once I get that mixed in and it reacts, it's gonna run just a little bit. So there are applications where you're brushing this on and you might want it to run a little bit, but not so much that you wind up with an expensive puddle. And when you mix a little bit more in, and again, just don't exceed 1% of the total mass. Once you get that mixed in and that starts reacting, you're going to have this nice, thick consistency that can either be troweled or brushed into place. So again, it doesn't take long for it to react and get you that nice, thick consistency. Now, real important to remember compatibility on all of these silicones and thickening agents and all of the additives that we offer. Uh, you can always check the product description on our website of any of our silicones to make sure you are using uh, additives or thixotropic additives that are compatible with that silicone because there are some cases where some thickeners may compromise the tear strength of some silicones. So when you're using different brands of thickeners and different brands of silicone and adding those all together, sometimes that can uh, result in some weird things happening. So again, always check the product description to see what the compatible additives are. 
So here I'm troweling this and brushing this on a piece of sign board. And you see we got that really nice thick consistency there. So again, for brush application, if we're brushing a skin or troweling a skin on or into a mold, very easy to do that when we add that high percentage of Thixo. We wind up with a nice thick uh, Thixotropic paste that stays on a vertical surface. So if you're making quick brush on molds, this is a real important piece of knowledge because with the 5110F, you can make some really nice fast glove molds by adding that Thixo additive and then just making a quick plaster banded shell over the top. And at the end of this video, I'm going to link to a couple of previous tutorials that go more in depth on that. Now, we're also going to show the process of thickening the 5130F. And again, 5130F is the fast version of 5130. 5130 is a, a little bit firmer than 5110. This is around a 25 to 30 shore A. So this is a good silicone for larger jacket molds or two-piece block molds. And again, the 5130F is really nice because you can make a block mold in a couple of hours, a multi-piece block mold in two hours. And uh, especially here in Texas in the summertime, you could get that done really quick. So again, this is a little higher viscosity than the 5110, but still very low viscosity as silicones go. So there are some applications for some of you making fairly simple, straightforward molds where you get away with using this without vacuum degassing. But again, very low viscosity. And just like the 5110, uh, the 5130, the normal formula of that has a working time of about 25 to 30 minutes and a four hour demold. Now the fast version that we're using here, the 5130F, this has about a six to eight minute working time and a one hour demold. And that six to eight minute working time is long enough that you could easily vacuum degas this and there's still plenty of application time. So if you're doing uh, brush on molds that require a little extra attention, uh, 5130F has enough time to be able to do that and still has that fast one hour demold time. So there we have our silicone mixed up with, I added just a little bit of red pigment just to make that a little easier to see. And of course it should go without saying that you always want to make sure you're using compatible pigments. So obviously here we're mixing silicone, so we're using silicone pigments. And then again, just like with the 5110, we're adding just a little bit of the Thixo additive. And again, if you just add a little bit of that Thixo additive, you're going to wind up with a slightly runny paste. But in this case, we added uh, just shy of the 1% mark. And that's going to give us a nice Thixotropic, almost peanut butter-like paste. And real important to play around with the silicone. Make a small batch like this and play around with it and see how it responds to thickener and see what uh, percentage is good for your applications. But uh, really important to understand and know how the thickener reacts with the silicone and just know what to expect once everything's mixed up right. And that way, when you're troweling this onto a vertical surface or brushing this onto a pattern, you know exactly what to expect. And then you can start playing with, again, like for a, a print coat using a very small amount of Thixo and then building up to a really thick paste to fill deep undercuts. Now, at the end of this video, I'm going to link to our skull video where we make a mold of a skull using the 5110 because that's a great simple glove mold technique that can be done over a variety of small patterns. So be sure to check that out as well as a video where we make a brushed in skin using the 5110 thickened with Thixo additive. So be sure to check those out. But again, you see here that uh, with that Thixo added, it reacts almost immediately and gets us a nice Thixotropic paste much like peanut butter that we could easily brush onto a vertical surface. And again, we can back off of that. We could put less in it if we want it to be a little bit runny. It just depends on the application as to what's going to make the most sense. And this doesn't affect the working time, but you will notice the working time kicking in a lot more when you add the Thixo, just because now you're going to be playing with the silicone. Unlike a poured mold, you're going to be brushing this on and manipulating it with a trowel or a brush right up until it starts to gel. Now this is right at one hour later. And you'll see that the cross section of that and using the Thixo does not affect any of the set time at all.
And I always like to use whatever's left over in my mixing cup as a gauge to see how things are progressing. And that way I don't accidentally stick my finger in some wet silicone. So always use your mixing cup to check your work before you start pulling or uh, peeling off a piece of silicone or demolding something. And you see there we have nice, strong, stretchy silicone, even with the Thixo additive. And both these pieces still have the nice same stretch. And that can either be, again, brushed or troweled onto a vertical surface. And the same thing with our 5110. Again, before I start poking at it, I always like to demold whatever is left in my mixing cup. It's also a good way to grade your mixing and just see how well you're mixing. Because if you do that, if you peel that out, and there's a bunch of sticky spots in there, you're not mixing thorough enough. And again, here's our... Uh, parts peeled off and you see we have that really nice high elongation and both brushing and troweling we both have that nice stretchy piece of silicone um, but again cannot stress this enough always make sure the additives that you're using are compatible with the silicone that you're working with We've just introduced a lot of new silicone formulas, and one of the things I found is there are some formulas out there that have different base resins, and that the, some of those, they might thicken with some silicone thickeners, but then it might compromise the tear strength. So again, always check the product description on our website and make sure everything you're using is going to be compatible. So it's important to remember the use of Thixo anytime you're encountering mold applications where you're going to be making a brushed on mold that could be done in multiple layers. It's a real good idea to have a good understanding of how the Thixo responds to the silicone you're working with. So you can control that and do very thin, light paste consistency on the print coat and then work up to a really thick consistency for filling deep undercuts. And also, when you're making castings, there's a lot of special effects applications and a lot of medical simulator applications that require silicones being thickened and brushed into a mold. And for that, again, real important to have a good grasp of how the Thixo responds to the silicone you're working with. And there might, again, be situations where you might want a slightly runny paste for a really detailed part to make sure you get that into all the crevices and all the surface detail. And then work up to a really thick paste that can, again, be troweled into the mold for uh, also for patching and filling air bubbles. So there you have the process of using the Thixo additive to thicken our silicones, especially, of course, the 5110 and 5130, and of course, the new 5110F and the 5130F. So as usual, all of the materials used in our tutorials will be linked in the video description, so be sure to check those out, as well as a link to our video library. And of course, all of the products are available on our website at brickintheyard.com. Now, don't forget about the videos here on the end screen. Of course, we have the skull mold and, of course, how to brush in a 5110 skin and bond it to flexible foam. So be sure to check those videos out if you haven't already. And also be sure to like and subscribe. And thanks again for watching.